Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Merry Christmas everybody! What better day to do some unboxings than today? What will be the best one? Do great things come in small packages like this one or even a small envelope? Or is it the big ones that are going to steal the show today? Let's find out. It's essentially Christmas nearly every day when it comes to my unboxing series, so it's not that different from a regular day, but both of the guitars we are going to unbox today are actually consignment pieces. So somebody sent these to me in order to do the review and then to also sell the guitar. And I know at least one person is going to be very happy with this guy. But first, let's get it out before I continue that story. Now, I'll be completely honest with you guys. This was dropped off to me personally. It was not actually shipped. I'm just faking this unboxing. <laughs> this is just a pretty standard rectangle aftermarket case. There could be anything in here. A Les Paul, Stratocaster, Telecaster, some weird H string thing. Who knows? What do we got today that's at least going to make one person happy? This is a 1976 Fender Stratocaster. There's this one guy in the comments section. I think for the past week or two, he's been saying, do a Ventera 70s or a real 70s Strat. So you can thank the guy who sent this one in on consignment for that. This is supposed to be a 100% original 1976. And I think my favorite thing about this example has to be the neck. You don't always find this, you know, quilty flaminess in a 70s Stratocaster. The condition's pretty nice too, and I love the wood grain in the body. But people on the internet have a tendency to hate the 70s Stratocasters, mainly because they're heavy and they have cost-saving features like the three bolt-on neck. And you know, quality controls can be kind of hit or miss in this era. So it's kind of like the same thing with 70s Gibsons. I personally like them, so we'll have to see if 70s Strats are as bad as some people say. But we will see this one on Fender Friday, so we got a couple of days. It's gonna be pretty tough to top a 76 Stratocaster, but let's go ahead and go the small little envelope. So this showed up in my mailbox from Reverb. I'm guessing this was likely just sent out to just about everybody. And I say that because it's addressed to my Reverb shop's name, the Troglies Guitar Show YouTube. But let's go ahead and uh, unbox our letter. says, happy holidays from your backing band. It's a nice little touch, you know? I never received anything from eBay like this. <laughs> All right, thanks Reverb. I'm sure we'll be doing more business this year. And uh, I was talking with the Reverb affiliate manager. Apparently they want to partner with me in some other way. I'm hoping it's like kind of what they did with Agufish, how they gave him like a thousand dollars to do this whole modification project. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but we'll have to see what that's going on for. Let's move on to this one. This is another company sent thing. It's not a uh, sponsored unboxing or anything, but this one's from Musician's Friend. We've only been friends for what, a uh, couple of months here, but I've bought a bunch of new guitars from them. So they sent me this little care package. If I had to guess, it's probably like a t-shirt or something, but we'll find out. They packed it very well. Oh, well, that's cool, a hat. You can never have enough hats and I don't get sent enough hats. <laughs> And I can't say that I've ever seen anybody wearing a Musician's Friend shirt outside of like a, maybe a review and demo type thing like at NAMM. Hey, it's a nice black shirt. <laughs> then, uh, is this supposed to be a bookmark? You guys tell me, I'm not quite sure what this is. I thought may maybe it was a sticker. Okay, there we go, it's a sticker. You're supposed to put it on your case or something. But you could use it as a bookmark if you don't take the backing off. How cool would that be? But all this stuff is empty, right? This has some heft to it. I'm, I would guess it's like a mug. I could use a mug. There we go, I was right. I think it was in 2017, Reverb sent me a little care package. And their mug was like a little tin. This thing, that's a real mug. 
spreading all this out, thinking about it, you know, Michael never asked me what my shirt size was. I think he just did a good guess there with large. <laughs> now we need to pick a Christmas winner for that car charger that we talked about last episode. I noticed a lot of people did not actually read the rules in the description. So I'm guessing there's actually not that many eligible entries in here. Congratulations, I'll reach out to you. And now for the last unboxing of the day. It's the last large package. Again, it's another guitar that was sent to me. And if you happen to notice, that's my eBay tape on this box. So I've once had this one before. This is another package from the guy who sent me the Orville by Gibson guitar. So that means there's gonna be something a little bit less than traditional in here. Oh, <laughs> we got the return of my wig. Last time I didn't give you guys this pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean guy. Hmm. So it appears we've got a little gig bag in here, and then we've got this big hard shell case. This is going to be one of those Russian doll situations here. Let's find out. <laughs> You guys don't know what's in here yet, but I do. I'm looking forward to this one. So this is an Edwards limited model. Now, if you don't know, Edwards is like an off brand of ESP. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research to tell you more about these things. But yeah, sometimes little things come in big packages. And I know I've done a lot on mini guitars, but this is actually a set neck mini Les Paul. None of the other ones I've demoed have been set necks. They've been bolt on necks. And honestly, this feels much larger than those other guitars. So I think it is slightly bigger. I'll have to do the measurements in comparison to my Pee Wee, but I can already tell this is a quality guitar. It doesn't even feel like the Lotus one that I did a review on. So this will be a fun little guitar. Now we got a couple of them to box up here. This guitar, if you've been following the channel, I think you know what's in here already. I was pleasantly surprised with how good rose gold looks on an SG. Sure, we found some quality control issues and I do wanna address a few comments. I'm not necessarily defending Gibson with all those small defects I found. I'm just letting you guys know that on most brand new Gibson guitars that I've had, they've been present. It's just something you kind of have to live with at this point in time if you are interested in a brand new Gibson. But I think I've probably sold Guitar Center at least four of these things. Because I had one guy reach out to me and I set him up with my musician's friend rep. He not only bought one of these, but he also said he got one of each of the Fenders. Man, if you're buying the Fenders, you should have bought them through me first. Then we could have had reviews of those, but hey, that's okay. We got to get this really cool SG shipped out today. And make sure you check out the full review and demo if you happen to have missed it. A sponsored guitar where I bought it brand new for him, got him a, a slightly better deal. Let me tell you guys, finding a deal on this guitar for this guy was really tough because Musician's Friend, the guys I can normally get a good deal from, they didn't have these things in stock, right? So I went through Sweetwater, I went through Music Zoo, I think I hit up Chicago Music Exchange as well. I was just going through every dealer that I've ever done a deal with trying to see who could get me the best price and it ended up being Music Zoo on this one. But if you missed the review and demo of this one, essentially what makes this guitar special, it's the finish and the gold hardware. But I'll let you check out that full review and demo for more in-depth information. And the last guitar to pack here on Christmas Day is one that I didn't think would take as long to sell as it did. There were a few kind of nibblers on this, but I ended up selling this a couple of nights ago at like midnight. I got a text from a customer that I had sold the guitar to, actually two of them to, about a year, a year and a half ago, something like that. But he decided to take home the SG Elegant. Such a beautiful guitar. I mean, this quilt top. <laughs> 
This has got to be the most beautiful SG in the world. I mean, the rose gold one is cool in a different kind of way, but this is cool in a natural wood kind of way. I never really did dig too much into this one on Gibson. I'm pretty sure this was probably a NAMM show piece or something special because it doesn't follow all of the other SG elegants. But what's kind of cool is this one's actually joining a Les Paul Elegant as well as my Green Burst Cloud 9 reissue guitar. So he's got kind of a cool collection going on of like the nicest guitars ever. So let's go ahead and get this one packed up. Thank you Trolley Lights for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a Merry Christmas, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.